In this video, we're going across the street to make building number two for my Cyber Streets diorama. This is a good one, so stick around and see how I made this. If you haven't seen the first building video in this series, I'll put the link here. You don't have to watch them in order, but you don't want to miss one. I started building a few of the buildings simultaneously before I decided that I wanted to take a lot more time on each one and make a separate video to do them justice. You can see here I'm chopping up a railway car and holding it up to all of the buildings to see where it'll fit best. I decided to use it on building two and after clipping all the parts that I wanted to clip, I added some styrene sheet to the back to fill in the voids. I added some foam core and other plastic here and you'll notice a jump in the progress. I've been having a problem with my camera freezing sometimes and then I just lose that video clip in progress. We'll get there at the end. I started to fill in gaps and holes with more styrene sheet and other different shapes of styrene stock. I grabbed some bits from kits and toys like this little locker. One of the doors made a good detail for the front of the building. Now that it's all closed in and the base detail has been established, I needed to decide what to do with the roof. I mocked up kind of a restaurant with cardstock and paper, and then I designed it all in Blender and printed it out. I couldn't decide if I liked it on top or underneath, and then I decided just to scrap it all together in favor of a new idea, a landing pad. And not just any landing pad, a transparent one. This is acrylic, and if you light it from the edge, you can illuminate designs that are etched into the surface. It's a technique I've wanted to use for a while, and it's something that I wanted to tap into for this diorama. These are 3mm LEDs, but I grabbed some more specific measurements because we're headed into Blender to design a mount for the lighting system. My idea was to elevate the pad with a mostly open skeleton of structure underneath. I plan on printing this on my Chidi Tech FDM printer, so I keep that in mind when I design it. I went with a design that has spaces for six LEDs. Once it was printed, I stuck it together with two millimeter styrene rods. And when I had the layout right, I fixed it in place with super glue. Then it was on to the screaming acrylic. This sound always makes me laugh. I got the acrylic down to size and then started making some stairs and a little roof too. Both of these were designed and printed in the same way. To give the illusion of an actual staircase going down, I cut an opening into the roof. For the roof of the building itself, I scored some panel lines into styrene, making sure that they aligned with the support structure. This knife is one of my favorite tools for styrene. It's the Tamiya P cutter. I'll put an Amazon link down in the description if you want to get one. All the links in the description are affiliate links and they really help me out without costing you any extra. If you've seen my other videos, you've seen this kind of greebling before, though I did recently find some new greeblies to add, like these wiring connectors. They'll make a good railing so nobody falls off this roof. You know what they say, safety number two. The front of the building needed something other than a flat surface, so I scored some vertical lines and added a pipe. Now it's time for the acrylic etching. I wanted to be extra sure that I got it right, so I drew it all out on paper first. And then I used a fine scribe and mini metal stencils to very carefully scratch out the pattern. This took so long, and applying pressure to the stencil was really rough on my arm and elbow. But once it was done, I was happy. I didn't mess any of it up. 
It came out great. While greebling, I saw this brand label and decided to add it to the building as a sign. It looks cool and it obscures some gaps, so win-win. With the addition of a little control panel, some conduit, more styrene, and generic mini Lego, it was time for the LEDs. I was messing around with some LEDs I had and trying to determine the proper resistance to use, but then I just googled this code and it turns out it was the part number. 3.2 to 3.4 volts means I can safely use two AA's for power without any resistors. Here's the brightness with a 3.3 volt source. I printed a flat template to aid with soldering and I bent the connectors across to wire them in parallel. And voila, there's the magic. Now because there's a trough for the LEDs to go in, I made a little detail to fit right in place over top. I'll paint and weather this to match the roof later. I also thought the front wall needed a little something, so it got a bolted on panel. On to the paint job. This one is pretty straightforward. I started by base coating everything with a mixture of black and dark browns. And then I added some light gray to the roof and these wall panels. Also the front entrance. This is in preparation for painting a lighter, brighter color later on. I next mixed a really dark metallic color to differentiate some panels here and there. And then I used the same color to dry brush over most of the building. The next dry brush was metallic silver. I recently picked up my first pot of contrast paint and I tested it over the white panels from earlier. Weathering was the next step and I went back and forth with washes and tissues, adding and taking away as I needed. I thought it would be interesting to add some weathering under the points of contact of the landing pad, but I went a little bit overboard. While there are lighting effects on the landing pad, I wanted to do some fake light in other places. I started with a pure white, and then I went over the top with the diluted inks. The yellow came out really vibrant. I'd like to try more with that in the future. Now that the painting was done, I put it all together and turned it on. It came out pretty good. I think I could improve the color scheme a bit, but it works well as part of a larger diorama. I'll be adding more buildings in the future, so be sure to come back for more. I'd like to give a big thank you to my patrons, Sensei level patron Adam, and my scratch builder level supporters Andrew Price, Spaghetti a la mode, Harker, Kitsch, Paul Bechtel, JC Hayes, John Stamosification, and Gamey Builds. You guys are the best. Let me know if you enjoyed the build. Go and check out one of my other videos on the channel. Create something, and I'll see you on the next build.